Good morning, folks. The Cosmic Ray Health Alert is over. Space weather focus transitions as we peek in on solar cycle predictions, supernova science, and a bit of weather and climate. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star. Surface is writhing, but the only real pop is off to the right side, the departing limb, as coronal fields expanded and broke open. Sunspots aren't even worth our time today, but the solar wind is, as a density rise followed by a drop out there and simultaneous rise in plasma speed and temperature is a perfect signature of a coronal hole stream. Luckily, it is weak, and the KP is just slightly up off the floor, ending the cosmic ray health watch. But one might ask how long these faster streams will last, and that's a horse of a different color. Corona hole departing the right side is just hitting us with the solar wind now, and we've got them in Earth-directed heliographic positions, extending all the way back to the incoming limb. Best answer? It could be a while. On to our top stories. Fantastic piece by one of the best solar physicists walking this planet today. Looking at solar magnetic bands predicting the transition to solar cycle 25, notably the weakest low of the coming cycle minimum. If you have been around a while, you remember this is the same guy who did the magnetic bands video demonstrating the polar reversal every 11 year cycle, and why the sunspots and the higher activity spots especially follow the bands from high latitude towards the equator. The sun is on the 11 year cycle downtrend right now, and they expect us to be at the bottom of the sunspot cycle in 2019, when the magnetic bands cancel at the equator. Up next, supernova. No pretty pictures, no cool graphics, just nerd crack as they break down the lethal distance of starbursts, how long ago they think Earth was hit, the relationship between Earth's magnetic field and the effects of the supernova, and how long we'd expect the danger to last. Here, they're saying about 10,000 years. Much more relevant story for our daily lives hits the North Atlantic. Folks, someone might be listening because they're starting to realize that the melting leading to cooling that is likely in the South probably works on the Northern Hemisphere as well. Switching hot and cold, even a bit in terms of latitude, means the ice reflects much more light at those lower latitudes, and the higher will refreeze in the darkness of winter anyway, a titanically important climate fundamental that is almost ubiquitously overlooked. Now, no way to overlook California, is there? As shown in previous day's news, it's Thursday morning and here it comes. Wind drive set by the low pressure battalion in the northeastern part of the continent which is stealing moisture from the tropics and bringing it right to the U.S. coastline, transforming it into thicker and thicker clouds as it gets further from the equator and turning it into major storms. When we zoom in here, we're going to see that a major morning rain dump is expected but it will also linger at lesser intensities throughout the day. A brief break from the rainfall will only leave time for the water to trickle downstream until the next system arrives in the second half of Friday. Rough couple of days coming up here. Folks, we've got pressure and radar forecast followed by a null school global run up through the atmosphere and shots of our star to close. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.